Hello everybody, this is Brendan from Common Motor Collective. That's common-motor.com on the internet. Uh, today we're working on Project Diamond once again. On the bench we have the cylinder head and the cylinder uh, for the engine and our bike. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be measuring the wear in these parts to determine what needs to be changed. If there's too much wear, do we bore the cylinder, put a bigger piston in, uh, put better guides in, etc. But the only way we can make that determination is if we measure what we have. So we're going to be measuring a few things today. One is our cylinders, um, the diameters, the taper, and the outer round. Uh, two, we're going to be measuring the head as far as the valve guide diameter and the valve stem diameter. These are our big key factors in knowing what we're going to rebuild or not rebuild. And I get a lot of questions from folks asking, well, when do I make the determination? This is the point in time where you have to figure it out. And it does take some precision measuring tools to do it. We'll show you what we're, we're going to show you what we're using. And um, let's just dive into it. Okay, the very, very, very first thing we're going to do is actually find our reference material. Uh, these two pages came straight out of the Honda CB450 service guide. And they have all the measurements we need in them. We had to dig a little bit because they were stuck in the middle of the chapter. So uh, this is for the uh, cylinders, this is for the um, cylinder head, but we're going to go ahead and talk about what we have here. Um, we're going to be looking at this chart and also uh, this graphic here in, in regards to our cylinders. Um, so we're going to be measuring diameter, we're going to be measuring out of round, and we're going to be measuring, measuring taper on the cylinder. And over here they've given us the, the values that the bike should have had when it was new which is this standard value. And then over here we have the serviceable limit means, well, how far can it be worn before it has to be machined? Um, so this is the bore, this is the out of rounds, and then this is the, the taper. They give us both metric and SAE, or American, uh, measurements. Now, all of my measuring tools are in SAE, so we're gonna be using the, the highlighted values here um, for our, our reference. and. It doesn't matter, metric or SAE works, but here in the U.S. we tend to have a lot more precision measuring tools that are in SAE versus uh, in metric. So, as long as you keep your calculations right or you have two values, you can use either or. And then over here we're showing how we're going to approach the cylinder. We're going to be measuring, uh, taking a measurement across and front to back. And we take a measurement at the top, the middle, and the bottom, and we figure out what's happening with the cylinder. Is it perfectly round? Is it out of round? Is it tapered? Is it bell mouthed? Is it um, bell bottomed? We don't know. So until we measure it, uh, we're not going to know. And we're also going to see does it fall within our service limits. If it's under the service limit here, our cylinder can be honed right here in the shop and put back together. If it's out of the service limit, then we have to send it off for machining and put oversized pistons in. Okay, so let's talk about the micrometer a little bit. Uh, this is a this micrometer measures two to three inches, and it measures all the way down to 0 0.0001 of an inch, so um, a tenth of a thousandth basically. And uh, snap gauge is a little spring-loaded guy. You would put it in your hole, in the cylinder hole, plunge it, snap it out at the diameter, pull it out of the cylinder, and then we'd measure that in the micrometer to determine what that exact distance is. Um, the dial bore gauge works a little bit differently and we'll show you it show it in action on the cylinder because it's easy to read. So let's take a look at the cylinder and um, start doing some measurings. Okay so I just taken the uh, the values off the our paper from the manual and wrote it here. Our standard value of the cylinder is 2.7560 of an inch. Um, and our limit is 2.7600, so that's as big as it can go. So as long as we are under this limit and we're above here, we should be okay to use the cylinder again. I've gone ahead and marked the cylinder uh, left and right, and I've drawn a couple lines on the each cylinder bore as just some a guide reference um, for our left and right and up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and take my snap gauge here, just to do an initial reading to see what we got. So I'll plunge the snap gauge, lightly lock it down, 
I'm going to drop it in the cylinder, oh, you know, about half an inch down. And I'm trying to very delicately tighten the top. We'll measure that distance with our micrometer. Okay, we've put our, our snap gauge in the micrometer and um, took a measurement reading on it. And it's, I know it's going to be hard to see in the video, but um, it was dead on the money at the 2.7560 as an initial starting values, which tells me the cylinder at this point is not very worn. However, we'd ever take just one measurement. We're going to probably take about 10 measurements to make sure we're doing it accurately and we're getting consistent results. So we'll do this a couple more times to see where we are, and then uh, we'll attack the uh, cylinder with the, the Dalbor gauge, show you how we use that. Okay, so I've taken a couple uh, measurements here of the cylinder with the snap gauge, and I'm getting some pretty consistent results here. 55, 54, 53, 51. Um, it's a little bit tighter uh, than this, so that says well, I'm probably a little bit out of calibration with my snap gauge, but it's pretty, consi pretty consistent, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we've calibrated our, our dowel board gauge to read at uh, 2.7560 um, is our zero, so we'll drop it in the cylinder, and if it hits the zero, we know we're exactly at that value. If we're to the left of the zero, we're a little bit big. If we're to the right of the zero, we're a little bit small. So we're going to see what the difference is. Uh, I am anticipating that almost everything is going to be a hair on the big side, so let's take a look. Drop it in. I'm going to rock it back and forth and we'll see where the needle stops. And it looks like the needle is stopping dead on the money at zero. That's good. We'll go ahead and drop it down a little bit further in the cylinder. Rock it again. Yeah, it's a little bit wider. Not very much. Not even half a thousand. It's less than that. Let's go all the way down towards the bottom. Same deal. Hitting the zero, marked it on. Take another value at the top here. Yeah, this cylinder is pretty tight. Like we're not getting a lot of crazy variance in it. Yeah, it looks good. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this. And we'll take some values uh, going this way. Same deal. All right, this is looking like it's reading. Go here towards the top. Uh, we're reading about half a thousandths bigger on the front to back side, which is okay because the pistons tend to put pressure on the front of the cylinder, so I'm not surprised that it's a little bit more worn in this direction. Same deal. Need about half a thousandths there. And then let's get the zero in back out again. So, uh, this. So basically, this cylinder is pretty round. It's about a half a thousandths wider this direction than it is this direction. But overall the value is pretty tight to this which is well under a surface limit. So that says this one could be honed. Um, we'll measure this one to see if it does the same thing. If they're both within here we can hone them, put new rings in it, and uh, put it back together. Okay the next thing we're going to measure is our, our cylinder head. And more specifically we're going to measure the Valston diameter here. And we're going to measure the guide diameter, which is the guide is down in here, I think the valve sits in, to see if the valves or the guides need to be changed. Something else I'm looking at as we had this engine apart is I'm looking at this right here. You see this silver line around the face of the valve? This is where the valve seats. And um, there's a line here, and there's another one here in the valve seat and the cylinder head where the two pieces make contact. Uh, just by looking at this one, um, it's pretty clean. It doesn't have a lot of pits, almost like no pits in it, uh, no chips or anything. So that's a really good sign that, um, that this valve is probably in good shape and can be reused again. Uh, the same thing with the, the seat here. Again, it's in really good shape. So I think we're going to be able just to lightly lap this with some lapping compound and use it again. That's assuming that we can use this valve again and assuming that, um, well, we have to change the guide, we can change the guide, but we can still use the old valve if we have to. So let's take a measurement and uh, see see what happens there. Oh, as a quick note, um, I also I have marked the cylinder. You know, left intake, left exhaust, right intake, right exhaust. We're gonna be taking measurements of the left intake, and just so you can help keep your stuff 
organized, um, we do things like this. Put all the parts to one side in a bag because we need to make sure those parts go back into that exact piece of the cylinder head. Okay, so I've measured um, the valve stem here with the 0 to 1 micrometer a couple places and I'm getting an average on the valve stem diameter. And I come down here, I wrote down the service limit information and the standard information out of the Honda manual. Um, if the valve was brand new, it should fall between the 0.2746 and 0.2751 of an inch, with the limit being 0.2740. Now we have to remember that as a valve stem wears, it gets narrower in diameter versus larger in diameter like we saw with the cylinder. Um, so our measurements were averaging out to 0.2746, which is actually still within our standard values. So that tells me that this valve is in great shape. It can be reused again, and it hasn't even gotten close to, uh, to wearing out. So uh, we're going to use this valve over again. And we're going to do the same process on the remaining three valves in the engine. Our valve looks good, so we're going to go ahead and measure the valve guide for this left side intake. And we're going to be using this uh, small hole gauge. It's very similar to the snap gauge. As I tighten it up, the head gets a little bit wider and expands. And so we're going to drop it in the valve guide and you know, expand it until we get a little bit of drag. And then we'll measure this diameter and compare it to our service values. tight. Just start to feel it drag. Alright, that feels good. Ugh. Okay, so we put the uh, 0 to 1 mic in the, the vice here to hold it and we've taken a measurement on it. And right now we're measuring 0 0.02756 on the dot um, as our valve guide diameter. We're going to take a couple measurements because, well, these little gauges are tough to, tough to read, so we're going to average it out just like the other snap gauge. But down here, our, again, our standards are 0.2756 to 0.2760 as our nominal values, and then our, our wear limit um, is up to uh, 0.2776, which is a little bit larger because the guide will increase in diameter. And our measurement comes in right here again. So, we're, again, we're dead on the money. This engine was in remarkably good internal shape, at least so far, what we measured. We're going to keep measuring a couple more parts and... Uh, We'll figure out we have to change anything out, but right now everything looks really promising that we might be able to reuse many of these parts over again. The good news is we don't have to send things out for machining. We can reuse what we got, so this is why it's really important to measure all your different pieces in your engine. Um, we measured one of our exhaust valves after we did the intakes and found out that it was uh, the stem was a little bit thin, but still within the service limit. Again, I can't emphasize enough, this is why we measure the parts to make sure can they be reused again or not? In this case, uh, we're going to reuse it again, but um, if it was just a hair bigger, we'd have to toss it and put a new one in. So, measure your parts. Um, this is Brendan at Common Motor. That's common-motor.com. Project Diamond. Thanks for watching, and uh, tune in next time, and we'll keep building this engine.